So I had the privilege of working again with Bob and Brad, which are two awesome physical therapists who want to make some products that can really help alleviate pain and determine how to actually stretch your body. So as you guys know, I am in school for occupational therapy, and it is so refreshing to see those in the healthcare field actually use some products and develop products that can really help you on the outside. So I've worked with Bob and Brad before, and I am so pleased that they wanted to work with me again to bring you this newest and latest update of their massage gun. Now this massage gun's name is the EM19 and it has a cool case, which is one of the carrying case features that I really do love. It's easy for me to store in my volleyball bag and I can take it, especially with all the different nozzles that it has. As you guys know, I really, really love massage guns, especially as I'm getting older. I enjoy the pressure and the deep pressure that it provides me, especially when I'm practicing and after games. So here you can see I'm using one of my favorite nozzles, which is the big ball. I really enjoy using it on my thighs because it really does alleviate some of that pressure on my thighs. And this time I can actually see the level that it is actually going up to. So by pressing the plus button, I can get more of a deeper tissue and it can go faster. I can also change the different nozzles that they have. And this time with the EM19, it had a new nozzle that I hadn't had before. I also want to note that this product is now available at Walmart. Can you believe this? Walmart is now carrying this product. So congrats to Bob and Brad. I know that it's really convenient to go and just hop in my car and go to a Walmart store and now I can find this cool product. So here's the nozzle that I really now think about using because this is just something that's unique in itself. It has a longer approach, so maybe it will be able to activate my muscles in a different way than the big ball will. So I'm really excited to try this out after my next game. I really hope that you go and check out, but I do have some really great news for about this product. As always, you guys know I love you and I wanna bring you something new. I'm gonna give away one of these. In order for me to give this away to you, you need to follow me and like the video, comment your favorite volleyball position, and share the video once. So, let's get into the video. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Coach Coco and I love volleyball. So much so my channel is full of tips, tricks, hacks, and anything you can ever need to know about volleyball. So I recently did a video on volleyball rotations, but let's talk about how those positions work. If you are new to volleyball, this is an exceptionally good video for you. I've done videos on my channel before outlining the different volleyball positions, but what does that even mean? How does it work? Let's get right into it. So if you didn't already know, when you're playing volleyball with any sport, there are certain positions that you should follow. There are positions like the libero, the outside hitter, the middle hitter, slash middle blocker, the the right side, the setter, the, there's a lot of different, the defensive specialist, there's a lot of different positions that you can choose to be. I'm a huge advocate of learning how to play and learn every basic skill before you decide into a position because you want to choose something that has longevity, something that you love, something that will translate for a long period of time. You want to make sure that you give yourself the best chance to follow up with something that you're passionate about. So that means learning all of the basic skills before you dedicate yourself to a specific position and narrow in. So when you think about volleyball as this huge expanse of knowledge, you wanna learn as much as you can basically from here, then narrow in and then narrow in into your passion. So in this video, we're going to talk about what those positions mean and what does it mean to choose a volleyball position. So when you're choosing a volleyball position, like I said, choose something that you're passionate about. If you know that you're a really great passer, you can see yourself 
doing some really incredible saves. You can see yourself passing for a long period of time. You have that volleyball eye and that volleyball IQ, then passing might be something for you. Typically people who love to pass stick in the back row. We see individuals like the libero. We see individuals like a defensive specialist that tends to be back row as well. We see a lot of different positions that play back row who specialize in seeing that ball come across the net and they're there and they're ready. When you are choosing a back row position, you have to make sure that you have have some agility you have some ability to think quickly and make decisions quickly you can turn on your feet quickly you want to also make sure that you're coachable because a lot of the times you're going to be talking with players who are next to you and communicating as we know in volleyball a lot of people who use the word mind to indicate that they're going for the ball we want to make sure that you go for the ball as well and you're not bumping into each other so communication is key to the success of making sure you're a great back row player. So make sure you have good communication. That is something that you should think about when you're a back row player, but also you should know how to set because sometimes the ball is out of system, out of rotation, out of this place that it's supposed to be, and it ends up in the back row and you have to set it across the court to a hitter in the front. Can you do that? Do you know how to set? Can you receive it? Or do you have that great depth perception in which you have the depth perception to pass a ball all the way from the back to the front and it be in the right spot? You need to be able to have that visual spatial recognition to be able to see where the ball is on the court, understand the court dimensions and be able to execute accordingly. So we talk about volleyball positions a lot, and a lot of you guys have questions about what exactly you're supposed to do. I think a lot of mainstream volleyball culture and volleyball culture online makes you all think that you have to know every single thing about volleyball before you play, and that you needed to just be jam-packed with knowledge, and when you hop up on the court or step on the court the first time, you need to know exactly what to do. Now, here's the truth to that. Some coaches in some places you go want you to have some knowledge, but we're gonna talk about what you need to know. Don't stress out, number one. Don't feel like when you're choosing your volleyball position for the first time that you need to know every single thing about that position. One of the things I do on my channel is I try to teach you about the foundations so that way you have some knowledge about all of the positions before you go and try out. You don't need to know every single thing about being a libero and everything about being a middle blocker. Part of the volleyball experience is actually learning as you go. It's important to learn those tips and tricks on your team because it really makes it for an enriching volleyball experience. Take your time. Nobody, and I mean nobody, has absolutely known everything at the beginning. As you can see, when I was learning how to play volleyball for the first time, it was a learning curve. I had to really work to learn and understand exactly what I was doing. And you know, it was an experience for me and it was something that I wouldn't pass up for the world. Learning how to do something new for the first time and understanding that grit and that struggle that you have to go through in order to perfect your craft is a part of learning a sport or learning anything really in the world. So take your time and be patient. Don't compare yourself to others. Don't feel like your journey is determined by other people's journey. I know that in volleyball, we all meet at different places. Some people have played club for years. Some people have never played, but just take your time and enjoy the process. Make sure you ask for feedback. This means that when you're speaking with your coach, make sure you ask coach, you know, hey, look, I'm trying to get better. I wanna get better. How are some ways that I can get better? If you don't know from the outside looking in perspective, especially your coach whose job it is to provide you with that constructive criticism, if you don't know what you need to work on, how can you fix it? I know that sometimes it's really hard to accept criticism or constructive criticism from others, and it can feel personal at times. I, I completely understand. I've been there. Sometimes I'm still there. But we need to work on listening more than we're talking. That means hearing what they're saying absorbing it, sitting with it, and then applying it if necessary. So if your coach is like, hey, I see that you're learning how to set, but we need to work on this, don't take it personally and say, oh my gosh, coach is saying that I'm not a good setter at all. What do I do? You know, I want you to think about it and say, okay, coach is seeing this in me. And remember, they're doing it because they want you to get better. 
Going off of that listen and learn topic, I know that when we're learning something, we really want to tell the whole world what we know. If you know how to serve, you want to tell the whole world you know how to serve and where you learn how to serve and how you learn how to hit and share your knowledge. And there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. But those, those moments where you're actually observing, those moments when you're watching others play, it's those moments that you're taking into account when you're watching volleyball online, that you learn something that you might not have known. You have to listen to what others' experiences are sometimes, especially by watching and observing. So when I mean listen and learn, I mean it in two ways. I mean, listen to your coach's feedback and learn and observe others and learn. So when you're on the bench, instead of talking about things that could be off topic, which I know we do, I know you do it, I did it too. Watch the gameplay to see some of the nuances others are doing and see how you could apply that. Make it situational. If something happens in the game, what could you have done differently that have maybe made a different outcome, okay? This is what I want you to do and take some time and take into account. But I really hope this like you like this video and you know it provides you with some knowledge that you might not have known and it's helpful for you. I really want you to be the best player that you can be, and hopefully this is helpful. All right, make sure you enter the giveaway. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.